Hijab Rao. Indian court rules that hijab can be banned in classrooms. On March 15th, a high court in Southwest India ruled in support of allowing the banning of the hijab in government run colleges and high schools. According to the Chief Justice of the High Court of Karnataka, uh, Ritu Raj Ash uh, Awathi, quote, he, wearing of a hijab by Muslim women does not form an essential part of religious practice. Al Jazeera reported that he stated that the government has the power to, quote, prescribe uniform guidelines. The hijab ban, or ordered by the Karnataka government last month, sparked protests throughout the state in which Muslim students and parents um, were outrage, expressed their outrage at what they say is an infringement on their fundamental rights, while many others counter-protested in support of the ban. Students who petitioned the initial order argued that their right to wear hijab is guaranteed under the Indian constitution. They also claimed that wearing a hijab is fundamental is a fundamental and obligatory practice for Muslim women. Uh, Anas Tanvir, the lawyer who represented the students, called the ruling, quote, disappointing and erroneous. The students of uh, the Students Islamic, Islamic Organization of India, an organization representing thousands of Muslim students, are concerned that this ruling could signal other states to follow suit. The case has been appealed and the matter will be heard before the Supreme Court of India. Okay, so is it just the hijabs that can be banned? Or did they mention about anything else religious that can also be banned in classrooms? Or did they just mention their job? Um, my understanding was that this ruling is focused on the hijab. Okay, I don't because like this at all. I was I reading like I was reading analysis of it. Um, and one source was talking about how you know, when you're making a ruling for a legal case, you need to like set a foundation and then build outwards. And so what the first thing that they ruled on in in this case is that the hijab is not an essential practice. It's not an essential religious That's practice. Not a, and then the rest of the ruling was oh built outwards. All right, so this is so not secular, right? I mean, when you're using Okay, so if it was like a France thing, like more like France, it would be so defendable, right? If there was the argument was like, we just don't, we just like across the board, equally do not let religious symbols in schools, all right? That would be like, okay, that's that's that looks and sm sounds and smells like secularism, okay, or laicite, okay, it looks like that, okay. But when you come and say like, oh, we're banning the hijab, specifically the hijab in schools, all right? And then your courts, the arguments that the courts are making is not based on, okay, like let's keep public schools and religion separate. They're making, they're going to your scripture, right? They're like looking about, looking into how essential of part of your religion this practice is so they're like they're using your religious scripture as authoritative text in making legal decisions this is the opposite of secularism who gives a crap what islam has to say about islam this has nothing to, this that should not be part of the decision making process of the goddamn court like, oh, let's look into the Quran and let's see where if it mentions the job, if it's essential or not essential. Do you know why they're looking at how essential this is? Because I think maybe they're like trying to make excuses for the turban. Okay. Because they know the turban is like a no no. All right. They cannot touch the turban. They will not ever go and say, like, yeah, the C we're banning the hijab and for the sake of consistency, the Sikhs cannot wear the turbans in schools as well. That would be the end of them. They would be like, okay, no, this is a huge taboo. So they're just coming up with an excuse to be like, why this can be banned and the other one can't be banned. Because like, well, hijab, there's no mention of the hijab in the Quran. Like, there's no, this is not mandatory. The turban, the turban, however, 
is mandatory for the Sikhs. So we're going to allow that, but ban the hijab. So th th that's the reason why they're like appealing to scripture, which a secular court should never do. What are your thoughts on this? No, I completely agree. And so one thing that I thought was very interesting was Oxymoron, who is here and who actually just became a member. Thank you, Oxymoron. Um, yes. Who's also a patron. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so one thing I find interesting is Oxymoron is a lot more sympathetic or supportive of the Hindu right wing than we are. And but even he is saying the state has no right to define religion to people. It is this is a disastrous approach. But again, secularism in itself is a bad idea. So Oxymoron on our Patreon had a lot of comments about this case. Um, and it, he has a very different conception about what secularism should look like in India, partially because of um, different cultural realities. But what we can agree on is that the state has no right to be involved in the theological matters. Now, I completely disagree that secularism is a bad idea. Even the rest oxymoron, of it, even yeah, 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 oxymoron yeah. <laughs> whose anti-secularism is getting it. Even oxymoron understand that the state has no right to define someone's religion. That's fantastic. Good job, oxymoron. I mean, half good job, but like, that's pretty good. That's impressive, but good. Yes. You had me in the first half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, why can't, yeah, this is the problem because they want to be secular, but they can't go after the turbans, right? So they're like, damn, we can't do full, like, like, like we want to be anti-hijab because it's Islam and we're scared of Islam, but we can't use a consistent form of secularism as an excuse because the turbans are a no-go. But yeah. So I was watching some Indian media about this and they were interviewing a senior advocate who is um, like sympathetic towards the ruling. And they were trying to say like, well, if people can wear crosses, like why can't they have the hijab? And they were trying to art. He was basically just trying to art or like the turban. Like, why isn't there consistency? And he was like, oh, well, people wear the turban for other reasons that aren't religious. Sometimes it's cultural. Sometimes it's just because of the weather. Like, oh, oh like it's not disruptive. Like the sure. cross isn't disruptive. Like I wasn't the wear I wasn't wearing the turban every day, but today it seems to be raining, so I'll wear my turban today. Like sure, or like the sun is like, you know, not good for my bold head, so that's why I wear the turban. Sure, 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 sure. Let's no. read some of these uh, start comments. Yeah, so Rudresh is saying now they're doing the Gita in school. So we're going to talk about this next week. But in Ooh, okay. um, Jugarat, they have now made the Bhagavad Gita um, part of the education in uh, grades 6 through 12. And then now Karnataka is looking at making it compulsory. So in the state that is so concerned about secularism, supposedly so that they ban the hijab in the classroom. They're now in the same month <laughs> going to look at making Hindu scripture compulsory education. Amazing. Wow. It's like, it's, it's, wow. it's laughable. It's freaking laughable, but we're going to really dig into that next week. Um, and Rudresh is also bringing up the fact that you know, I think a lot of people find it outrageous, especially if you are atheists like us or other people who aren't, find it outrageous that lawyers are bringing forward Quran verses in court, like making theological arguments in court. It's just so, it's, it just makes me feel so gross. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah it's really Wait, outrageous. You want to go that route and say, like, well, it's not essential in the religion. I don't know. So you want to make everything that is essential in the religion then lawful? Like, is that the argument? Because that's a dangerous route to go. I mean, have you read the Quran? You want to, are you sure you want to go? I'm like, okay, fine. Let's make everything that is essential in the Quran part of the law. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so secular rarity is saying, how could they possibly rule that the hijab isn't essential? So this is very interesting because a lot of people have different arguments about this. So I was reading online um, in the print about how this um, essential religious practice test, as it is called in Indian law, has been evolving and there's been precedents for it created over the years since like the, the around the 50s and onward. And um, they, 
So it's this idea, well, let me read a little bit about it because this is very important. This is central to this case. What does the test mean? Article 25 of the Constitution guarantees, quote, the freedom of conscience and the right to freely profess and practice and propagate religion. However, this right isn't absolute and is subject to deport public order, morality, health, and other fundamental rights. Well, Article 25 itself does not read any other condition into the protection of this right. Courts over the years have ruled that the right should only protect, quote, essential religious practice and not all religious practices. So this test decides which religious practices are protected under the Constitution. The courts have adopted varied approaches to the test over the years. In some cases, they relied on religious texts to determine essentiality in others on the empirical behavior of followers, and in a few, whether the practice in question existed at the time the religion um, or originated. And so there are lots of people who openly, you know, talk about how, quote, one of the criticisms of the essential religious practice test as voiced by Justice D.Y. Uh, Chandra Chud is that the courts are not equipped to deal with matters of theology and base critical judgments off of theological discourse. He also argues that there are better tests than devices to replace this test with. Ruling on matters of faith in the context of a religious practice being harmful is not the same as the abrupt decisions that involve the telling the followers of religion what is essential to their faith and what isn't, essentially when the practice does not infringe or impose on the rights on it of anyone else. So we're in this very sticky, very dangerous, in my opinion, situation in the Indian legal system where on the basis of precedent over the past several decades, we now have the courts deciding for millions of people what is and is not an essential part of their religion, when really the state should have no Good. say in that matter. I'm sure I'm sure the Muslims are appreciating how Hindus are telling them <laughs> what their religion is about. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> Hindus decide. I Hindus literally telling just Muslims, spilled my coffee no. on myself. <laughs> 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 like Hindus, Muslims, like this is essential part of religion. Like, well, I, we're reading scripture and we're telling you that it's not. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. We're being preached Islam by Hindus. Oh my God, this is the end of times. The Muslims, like, this must be the end of times. <laughs> what are you, a Dawah guy? <laughs> oh my no, God. It's, I think it's really. Um, Interesting, though, because the question about if hijab is obligatory is something that is like theoretically up to debate because you have like these feminist Muslim scholars who argue that it isn't. But Armin, I think you would agree or argue that anyone who's being honest about the precepts of Islam will openly say, yes, this is obligatory for women. Stop pretending otherwise. Okay, it depends on what you mean by essential, because if by essential you mean everything that is in the Quran and the Hadith is questionable, then okay, the Quran's reference to hijab is only like a covering and it doesn't mention your head, okay, and there is like this curtain that's supposed to be uh, between Muhammad's wives and others, like it wasn't on the body, so it's not like it doesn't directly explicitly say that oh, I put this covering on your head, okay, there's not, that's not in the Quran, okay, but once you open the door to Hadith, uh, then the hijab becomes mandatory right away, right? Like very fast. So I don't know what what Islamic scripture they're reading. Are they just consider considering the Quran just essential and you know get, giving up on all of the hadith um, and then interpreting the Quran by um, in the way that they want? So I don't know what they're doing. So we'll see. But we do have to read a few other star comments, especially by our members. And then yes. Go to um, so oxymoron is clarifying his stance, saying, "I'm not anti-secularism. It's just a very flawed idea. Next, we will end up banning names like John or Krishna. Secularism only works in monolithic societies." Wait, let me respond to that. You don't understand secularism. Secularism doesn't come and tell you that you can't do religious things in public spaces or in your private life. Secularism means the government stays out of religion, not. Secularism doesn't mean that. In fact, in fact, that would be anti-secularism. Okay, oxymoron. So if you understand what secularism means, based on what you're saying, I think you would be pro-secularism, right? Because um, banning names like John, what is that? And Krishna? Okay, so banning a name like Krishna 
because it's religious would be anti-secular because the government is getting involved in re people's religious practices. So you see how secularism works? Secularism doesn't mean that people will be banned from doing religious things. It means that the government will be bad in getting involved in religious things. So a government that is telling you that you can't have the name Krishna because it's religious is doing something that is anti-secular because it's getting involved in people's religions. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sorry. Oh, totally. Um, oh, Selva oh, Kumar just members. became a member. Thank you, Selva. Uh, um, thank so you. there was another uh, comment saying, Bengali Hindu is saying, many Muslim girls were not allowed to sit for their exams because of the hijab. So this is one thing that's um, very central to this, the wider controversy of this was this um, scandal started to break out right when these senior girls were supposed to be sitting for their college exams. I think it's college exams. Honestly, it seems like you guys have an excessive amount of exams in India. So I'm not sure what kind of exam it was, but it was a very important one. <laughs> and um, so because of the, when the, before the state made the final ruling that we're now discussing, they had an interim ruling where they're saying, until we come up with our final conclusion, we're going to ban it in the meanwhile. And so during this period of time is when the exams were supposed to take place. And so Bengali Hindu was saying many Muslim girls were not allowed to sit for exams. My understanding is that they boycotted the exams because they were not allowed to wear the hijab. So honestly, that was their choice. And now that they've had this final ruling, they were asking to have the opportunity for re-examination and the governments or the school has said, no, you cannot have the re-examination. You missed it because if we made, make an exception for you, because if you made this choice voluntarily to boycott it, we can't open it up for you because then everyone else is going to be asking for a re-examination. So I thought that was very interesting. And this also touches upon the other thing other aspect of this in that there were many women coming forward and saying, I am not going to go to school. I am not going to go to college now until I can wear hijab. So it brings up this wider aspect or problem regarding, um, you know, the, the right to education and are Muslim girls now disproportionately being denied education. And given the motivation of the Indian government at large to um, disincentivize the Islamization of its Muslim population um, is yep. is denying Muslim women or ma making any barrier whatsoever to Muslim women a accessing education actually um, an obstacle to this goal of theirs. Many people would argue, yes, it's against their own interests um, because if you're more educated, you're more likely to let go of more conservative symbols right, of, ob of religious to, observation. We need to move on. I'm just going to address the ones because I'm going to address the rest uh, faster. So let me just don't say it. the K word, say triple K. Yeah, I am still happy. So Eximar is saying I'm still, I'm still happy. This is banned. Uh, those, what is this? I don't know. Activists in, in, I don't know what this means. Saying, I'm still uh, happy never that mind, this never is mind. banned. Those college activists in black triple K-esque uniforms weren't successful. Sadly, some Muslims where this wasn't an issue at all will suffer. So by black triple K-esque uniform, they're talking no, about no, no, the niqab. Very, one sentence response. One resp Okay. Okay. Oh, I get it now. Okay. 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 So what's her, what's his point? These just like celebrating the fact that these ultra conservative women wearing the niqab mm. weren't successful in being allowed to continue to wear their religious outfit, but saying there are Muslim women, there, there's Muslims in general who this wasn't that big of a deal to them, but now they will be neg negatively impacted by this. Well, he's celebrating people being hurt by this. Anyways, I don't know what the, what the point is, but I'm against the naqab. I think you could ban the naqab everywhere. That's fine, if that's what you're saying. But I don't know exactly what he's saying. Sorry if I'm slow. I, I, because we've been it's been 40 minutes and we're only on news too. That's why I'm trying to get move past this. Uh, Barry saying hijab isn't banned in Indian media. Misrepresented the court order. It depends on school college. Yeah, we did. Barry, I, we were I mean, very clear. It, yeah. The court has ruled that they are allowed to ban. Yeah. 
And that's exactly why I said this is I can't support this because it's not across the board consistent policy, um, kind of like something in France or something like I don't yeah this is completely different I don't know and I, when you say you are allowed to ban the hijab that means that you can ban the hijab but not the turban or not anything that is Hindu right not anything uh, Sikh not as a Hindu like you can selectively choose so you're opening the door for discrimination you're not being consistent across the board this is the worst way of doing it so yeah. That's one of our reasons why we're against this. Um, and then uh, last, uh, th because this is a member comment, I'm going to highlight uh, this one. Silva Kumar is saying, back from vacation, and congratulations to Atheist Republic on getting back YouTube monetization. Thank you, Thank Selva. You. Thank you for becoming a member. Yes. Atheist Republic needs your help. We've been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Ababi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.